Good evening. We would like to welcome you to our presentation of the Stations of the Cross. In keeping with the solemnity of Jesus' passion, we ask that you refrain from photography and please silence your cell phones. Our living stations encompasses the entire assembly area. Remain seated throughout the entire production. Follow Jesus as he is led by the guards and notice his mother coming from the back. Thank you for coming to share this experience with us. We will begin in just a moment. First station, Jesus is condemned to die. Close your eyes for a moment and breathe in deeply. Exhale, go back to the time of Jesus. Look at his face, the color of his eyes, his hair, the way he moves, the sound of his voice. Now, open your eyes, turn your gaze gaze towards the back and picture the day as a Friday. You have heard that Jesus was arrested and is being taken to Pontius Pilate for trial. You go along to see what is happening, to walk with Jesus so you can understand him better. And in the process, you begin to understand the depth of his love for you. Look at Jesus as he is thrust before the crowds, made up of the same people that he had healed, taught, and eaten with. Many of the same people who now scream for his blood. Crucify him, crucify him, they chant over and over again. Pilate tries to sway the crowd, but they yell only louder. Crucify him. It doesn't seem fair. What does he seem to say to you in this time of certain death? Let us pray. Lord, Help me to recognize you, not only in the saints and the martyrs and those we consider holy. Help me to see you in the innocence of the children, the wrinkles of the aged, the fear of the confused, and the cries of the angry. Help me to never be the executor of the present, 
who condemned you centuries ago on the cross. Second station, Jesus takes up his cross. Jesus is led away by several soldiers who strip off his clothes and begin whipping him, is beating his body with sticks. No one comes forward to stop the cruelty. No one brings bandages for Jesus' bleeding body. You look on helplessly, wondering how much longer they will continue to beat him. Then, one of the soldiers makes a crown out of thorn branches and near, nearby and jabs it down onto Jesus' head. You look into his eyes at this moment and think of a time when you felt totally alone, a time when it seemed like everyone was ganging up on you, when no one came to help you out or to stand up for you. As you recall this experience in your life, you look into Jesus' eyes, and you know he understands. Let us pray. Lord, give me the patience and perseverance to bear the burdens that bring about my suffering and confusion. Give me the grace to accept myself, my temperament, my temptations, and my limitations. In your passion, let me see the possibilities. And in my cross, let me find courage. station, Jesus falls the first time. The guards push and prod Jesus forward to Calvary. He stumbles and falls under the weight and the heavy burden of the cross. As he falls, the weight of the wood upon him drives him to the ground hard, and it crushes his hands and knees into the rocky soil. You catch a glimpse of his eyes, and you begin to understand about some of the crosses you are forced to carry in your own life, forced by the people who do not seem to care about what the burdens did to you. Share one of these crosses with Jesus now, and know Jesus understands. Let us pray. Lord. In your compassion, you showed us how to overcome, not by being above falling, but having to grace to get up and continue. In all that I undertake, I will first go to you in prayer. I will open my heart to you and let your work win and through me. Show me your grace so that I may depend on you instead of myself. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. You see Mary, Jesus' mother, horrified by the sight she is forced to endure. Her son is being led toward his death. 
You see how she wants to ease his suffering, to take his place if she could, to rescue her son from his pain and torture. She reaches out to him. Then a guard pushes her back into the crowd. You look into Mary's sinking eyes. Tears of hopelessness stream down her cheek as she cries out to God. You remember a time when you cried out to God, a time when it seemed that God was not real, when all seemed hopeless and lost. You share that time with Jesus now and know that he knows what is in your heart. Let us pray. Lord, give me the strength of your holy mother, Mary, to watch those I love suffer. Prevent me from foolishly thinking that I can take away their suffering. Rather, give me the courage to endure in order to make their suffering redemptive. Give us the grace to cope with our loved one's pain as well as our own. Out of your pain and out of our shame, our God creates virtues that would have never existed had we not first suffered. Help me, Lord, to teach, to go and trust. Please stay close to me. Simon helps to carry the cross. Jesus is struggling toward Golgotha. The guards are getting impatient and trying to push him on. They pull a protesting man from the crowd and put one end of the beam upon his shoulders. He came to watch a spectacle, not to be a part of it. Then Jesus catches Simon's eyes, and Simon loses his urge to speak. He walks on in silence not sure what to make of this broken and beaten man. Recall a time when you felt forced to do something against your will, when you were turned from a spectator into a participant, and how the experience began to change your perspective of things. You think about how difficult it is to get involved, to take a stand for what you believe in, even if you have to stay it alone, like Jesus is doing now. Let us pray. Lord, help me to always recognize and welcome the signs of Cyrene in my life. Remove the pride that says, I can do it myself. I don't need your help. Help me to realize that Simon was there for you, and you will send him to us. If only we recognize him in our midst. Help me to never refuse the Simons in my life who just want help. Help me to realize that God works as he wills, not only when it is convenient or familiar. Help me to be more like Simon for all those I meet. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. As the hill grows steeper and the cross heavier, the blood and sweat on Jesus' face begin to mix together, stinging his eyes. Veronica pushes forward through the crowd and, you, you, and uses her veil to wipe the face of Jesus. You see their eyes meet, conveying the unspoken words of compassion. Did you realize that she was the last person in Jesus' earthly life to touch him in a gentle act of mercy? Remember a time when you had to push forward to help another in trouble, when your act of kindness was overwhelmingly appreciated, a time when you stood up for what you believed. Veronica couldn't carry his cross. She couldn't take away the suffering, but she was there to show Jesus compassion. Let us pray. 
Fill my heart with a generous spirit and my mind with a searching eye. Help me to find a way to show my gratitude by the way life I live. Give me the gentleness and willingness of Veronica. Bless me with wisdom to recognize the difference. There's no way I can make it different. The seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. The cross is now almost unbearable for Jesus. The ground seems to give way with each step he takes. Once again, he falls heavily to the ground, his knees crushing against the rocks and dirt of the hillside. It takes a couple of minutes before Jesus gains the necessary strength to stand back up. Think about a time in your life when you failed and fell hard, thinking that you would never get over it. But someone helped you up. Someone has faith in you. You look into Jesus' eyes now, and you finally understand it was he that never left your side. Let us pray. Father, help me to remember your great love for your son and for all of us. Open my eyes to realize that you really are the only one who can understand our weakness. Fill me with the knowledge that you do not demand perfection, only persistence. Give me the grace and encouragement to get up again and again. Help me to realize that defeat comes not just in the loss, but in the failure to try it again. Jesus speaks to the women of Jerusalem. Jesus notices a group of women grieving and crying out for him. Their tears muddy the ground beneath them as their prayers of mercy rise into the air. Jesus gathers his strength and speaks to the women, telling them to cry not for him, but for themselves and their children. You hear these words spoken to you as well. You think of some behavior that is keeping you from reaching out to others, some fear or hurt that keeps you from letting go and from letting God into your life. Let us pray. Lord, there are so many faces at so many occasions. Help me to search for the face of God in every person I meet. Give me the grace to give all those in need the strength and the courage that you have given to me. When I am weak, help me to draw strength and encouragement from those around me. station. Jesus falls the third time. Almost to the top of the hill, Jesus falls for the third time. Pain is ignited throughout his body as it collides with the hard ground. You want him to stay down, to fall asleep, and to wake up discovering that this was just some bad dream, and for a moment it seems to be. His body is still. The scene is marked by an eerie sense of peace and calm. 
but the moment of calm is broken by the soldiers and their spears as they prod him back up for the last few steps of his agonizing journey. Think back to a time when you too wanted to escape the pain, to just fall asleep and pretend it wasn't there. Once more, you look into the eyes of Jesus and tell him about it, and he responds to you from his heart. Let us pray. Lord, give me the strength to get up when my body is too weary and my heart has lost all hope. Help me to get up, brush off the dust, and face a new day with the hope that even though I am not perfect, I am not alone. In all things, give me the courage to go on. Lord, help me to realize that failing to try is to give up on you. Please help me to feel your presence. station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. As soon as Jesus struggles to the top of the hill, the soldiers humiliate him by stripping him of his garments. The guards fight over his bloody tunic. We stand shocked at how people could care so little for a human life, at how easily they have stripped this man of all that he possessed and how even that wasn't enough. We begin to get angry at these thoughtless people, but then we catch Jesus's eyes, and somehow inside, we are reminded that we too have played this role. Have we taken part in stripping another person of their dignity and self-worth by using words and actions to beat the person down? Perhaps a classmate, a family member, or even a stranger? Have we delighted in someone being bullied or punished by another justifying in our minds that they are getting what they deserve? As we continue to gaze at Jesus, stripped of his dignity, we realize we too have contributed in this same behavior. We tell Jesus about it. He listens, and he forgives us. Let us pray. Lord, help me to never desire to belittle others in my thoughts and actions. Enable me to give compliments rather than conceit when I desire to put myself before others. Fill my heart with compassion so I may turn my selfish pride into an act of love for another through a sincere smile and compliment. You alone truly know me, and in that I find comfort and hope as I continue to surrender myself to you. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus's arms are stretched across the beam as large nails are painfully driven through his wrists and feet. There is agony beyond belief and then numbness. Soldiers secure his arms and feet with a coarse rope that rips away his skin as the beam is hoisted up in the air. Hanging by his arms, Jesus struggles for every breath, every movement bringing with it a wincing pain that races throughout his body. The soldiers nail a final insult over his head, a sign declaring his crime, 
the King of the Jews. The pain and agony well up overwhelmingly as his followers cry out, Why God? Why kneels in your son? You want to turn away from this horrible scene, to escape the ugliness of this moment. You struggle with the reality that a good father would allow his son to endure such unimaginable pain and suffering. But you trust, knowing that Jesus has prepared you for this moment, for meaningful suffering, for redemptive suffering. You recognize that Jesus is suffering for you, and as you look back toward Jesus on the cross, you realize the profound level of his love for you, and that it is your pain he is bearing. Let us pray. Lord, help me to learn how to suffer well, to trust in the beauty that you make all things good, even when I do not see it in the moment. Help me to choose to use my sufferings for others in offering my pain for my family, classmates, coworkers, neighbors. Help me to never underestimate the pain and suffering of others as I may not know their story. Help me to greet each person I encounter with your loving and generous heart, regardless of how they greet me. The 12th station, <clears throat> Jesus dies on the cross. The combination of all the beatings and falls have taken a toll on Jesus. He is weak from this horrendous ordeal. Jesus looks at his mother and says, woman, behold your son. And then to John, he says, behold your mother. He lifts himself up to draw an agonizing breath embracing his last moment to reach out to his people. He cries out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These words, which appear troubling, actually bring comfort and hope to those who know Jesus is quoting Psalm 22, the ancient Psalm of hope and despair. Even as he lets his last breath flow from his lungs, his acceptance echoes through the haloed silence that has fallen over the crowd. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Then, only darkness. Jesus is dead. His torture has ended. The crowd slowly begins to leave. The excitement is over. Only those who agonized with him remain. You decide to stay, trying to figure out the amount of love it took for this man to die like this for so many people, even for the people who did this to him. You begin to wonder, am I worth this amount of love? Have I earned it? Did he die in vain? And for a moment, you too are left with doubt, fear, and wonder. 
Let us pray. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Dear Lord, let me never be parted from you. By your suffering and death, bring me to the joy of a new life with you. station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. The noise has stopped. Joseph of Arimathea and John the disciple step forward to take Jesus' lifeless body from the cross. As they place Jesus in the trembling arms of his mother Mary, her anguish knows no bounds. As her cries of sorrow fill the afternoon sky, the disciples say nothing. With aching hearts, all is silent. As you watch her cradle and stroke her son's face, you realize how much his life meant to her <clears throat> and how much his death means to all of us. You admire the courage Mary had to allow her son to sacrifice himself like this. Was it worth it? Could it not have happened another way? Once again, you struggle to understand how God could let this happen and why God wanted you to witness it in this way. Let us pray. Lord our God, help me to love and not count the cost. Help me to understand that love is a decision, a choice and not a feeling. Help me to love even the unlovable, the ungrateful and the unchangeable. Give me the strength to love without boundaries, when loving is hard or when all we can do is cradle your child in our arms and weep. station, Jesus is placed in the tomb. John and Joseph bring Jesus' body to a cave that will serve as a tomb. His body is wrapped reverently and completely. 
then laid down in a cave, and a huge stone is rolled in front of the entrance to seal it off from the life that goes on outside the tomb. It seems that death has won, that the end has been reached, but death will not hold Jesus down. He leaves us with hope and promises. All is forgiven. God will never abandon you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I am humbled and profoundly moved by your love and sacrifice for me. Help me to continue to grow closer to you, to seek you and to emulate your love. Help me to not shy away from the difficulties and pain of life, but instead see each moment as an opportunity to be united with you. So 